We're back in a desiccated apartment building. A floor that gets cleaned always on one place. There's messages everywhere written on the walls. And door number nine is locked, but there is a package here. Some money, and we need money, so we need to get this. I'll take everything. A Boogie Street postcard. Is it for where the boogeyman went? You'd hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. I'll knock. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. Knock. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. It's time the steps come closer. Who is this? demands a female voice. Weary and tense. This is the police. Open up. Do I have to open the door? You hear the clacking of heels again as the other side walks right up to the door. The tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. Yeah, then can we knock? A poor communard, from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. All right, we'll come back. We'll be back. We'll be back. What is that? Philippa. Someone has drawn a five-pointed star on the wall. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk-drawn number on the board says number 11. Like it's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. All right, we'll, we'll do that. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk-drawn number on the board says yeah, we'll try number that. 11. What are you doing? You're trying to cut the body of the lock with the chain cutters, and it's really not working. Uh, I believe it's the shackle you mean to cut, detective. Yeah, I know. I turn points to the corroded loop with a glove. He's finger. just trying to help. Don't take it. Bad. Relax. Don't you think that's what I'm trying to do? Perhaps you should give it another go. Yeah, we'll 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 do that. The shackle snaps like a twig, and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. What will we find here? Stay calm. What a beautiful room. A bust of a philosopher. Flamboyant poster of a white star. Real lithography. Books of critical theory on the monstrosities of capital and such. Photos of revolutionaries posing with guns. And we recognize they love to pose with their guns. And who is that? Can we talk to them? A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. Yeah, that's us. Kim, you have to admit this Krasmazov bears a striking resemblance to me. Hold on a second. Is this why you broke in here? To find out whether you're Krasmazov? I'm not saying that I am Krasmazov. I'm, uh, no, no, I'm, I have to consider and investigate all possibilities. Except that Krasmazov is dead. He's been dead for 50 years now. Just humor me for a moment. Don't you see the resemblance? Well, you both do seem to share an affinity for sideburns. But it seems like old Kras here didn't drink nearly as much as you. Maybe this bust shows him before he started drinking. Ah, very well. Let's look for identifying features then. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? I, I can't tell. I can't see my face, you know. All right. 
But here's the big thing. Krasmas of Luke Samaran, and you don't. But I'm part Samaran myself. Okay, you win. Be Krasmazov then. I don't care. Why are you so hell-bent on proving that you're Krasmazov anyway? Um... Because... because... I'm... I'm... I'm a... F I feel it. All right, Kras. If you say so. Why does this town have a bust of Krasmazov in the bedroom? The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. He looks around mumbling before mumbling to himself. Uh -huh. hmm. What have we found out? Oh, we, we have found out something new. Let's see. Could we go for we could la learn something how about we get better at at visual calculus no drama rhetoric na encyclopedia might be a good idea Authorities. We need to know more. We need to know more. Father Mazel. The hero of the working class. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. He leans closer to inspect the photos of revolutionaries in the war. There aren't many communists around. Not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. He was a mass murderer. There's nothing cool about keeping his bust on your nightstand. He was definitely controversial. The tenant here seems to like him. He leans closer to inspect the photos of revolutionaries on the wall. So are we a mass murderer There as aren't well? many communists around. Not after the revolution. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. I, s I see it now. But what's in here? A bullet. <gasps> and we've found some new clothing. What is, what is that? could get us better at conceptualization. It's even better than our shirt. Oh no, let's have a look at our jacket. Esprit de corps. Hmm. And he might be called Philippe. Close the door. What's that? That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an pentagram. pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. Inspected closer. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. Why is it upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. <laughs> Why is it white? Because white is the color of peace. And the antlers? The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world. And at the same time, above it and what does this evoke in me gone gone is the glory of hope only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways goodness me this is dangerous dangerous knowledge. you are the big communism builder now 
It's you or no one. This investigation certainly takes a toll on us. What's in here? Box is filled with cleaning chemicals, smells of laundry detergent. Yes? Uh, I didn't want to talk to you. There was something we needed to inspect. Flip up glasses. But we have our coolest glasses. Yes, they are better. What's in here? Eviction notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. Old shoe rack, boots, sneakers, old slippers. And a door. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges, secured to the door frame with a safety chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno de Reuter. Uno de Reuter. Looks like we found where Kuna's dad lives. And the place comes with three months worth of utility bills. Knock lightly. No response. Good thing you already have the chain cutters in your hand. Nothing left to do now but snip, snip. Yes. Snip. The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The links fall to the ground on the other side of the door. I know there's no stopping you, but let's at least make this quick. There's no stopping us. Are they still alive in here? And what did they have here? Money. Why didn't they pay then? A phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamine conveniently equipped with a straw. Lieutenant, I've located psychoactive substances on this table. Good. Confiscate it. The minuscule amount of amphetamine doesn't interest the lieutenant in the slightest. He listens instead to something in the other room. It's hard, but we will take the speed. You pocket the bottle as if it were the most natural thing in the world. <sighs> Glossy erotica covers the wall wrinkles from moisture. What's in here? Is that our things? A regular black jeans. Would give us some more composure. It's definitely better than that thing. Yeah, look at us. We look really good now. And the hat. The hat makes it complete. A bundle of snoring. clothes heaped on the bed. A stained parka, some towels and a duvet, some socks even. Hold up, Lieutenant. Look at that pile of clothes. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant has covered his nose. Slowly reach the Something hand. underneath there is breathing. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Just get out. No, 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 no. We, we could... We could... We will, we'll Your see. hand touches a greasy duvet, covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There is something alive underneath it. Could be dangerous. I'm out. Let's get out, Lieutenant. On the other hand, we have to find out more. We have to tell him. A bundle of clothes heaped on the bed. Something underneath there. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Oh, Your God. hand touches a greasy dude. You Pull see the a 60-year-old, fat, red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol. And God knows what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. You don't have to take him down. He's already down. Kim, is this thing even alive? I'm afraid it is. Look, it moves. He points to the fleshy lump sticking out from the other side of end of the blanket. The limb seems to be twitching from time to a time. A groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. 
He's trying to say something in his sleep. This Kuno's father we see. Well, judging by the color of his hair, I would say yes, it is. The lieutenant's right. The man's unwashed hair bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. The light from the window falls into his half-open eyes. Doesn't look like, like he's going to fuck up anyone anytime soon. No, it really doesn't. This looks very hard to recover from. This man won't be feeding his family anytime soon. Not that he was, but at least he won't be beating his son. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty and frozen. It's clear that the person behind them is not awake. This is serious damage. I'm still not sure he's not dead. Suddenly the man starts growling. Three words manage to escape his mouth, along with a strong stench of alcohol. Fucking kafapi. Look, he's trying to communicate. Maybe we should help him somehow. What is there to do? We could turn him on his side so he doesn't choke on his own vomit, but he's already on his side. Excellent form. We could take him to Remedy or Saint Baptiste, but he doesn't have money for medical services. The arms sauce would turn him down. They don't do charity for people who are trying to kill themselves. Besides, he'd be dead in a few. Lieutenant stops listening. Years, months, weeks. The pile of blankets grunts miserably. We'll figure out what he's trying to say. The man groans once again. But his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables. A hand emerges from the blankets, trying to gesticulate something, and then falls back again, limp and defeated by sleep. A loud snore escapes his mouth. I took your amphetamine, old man. Silence. Only heat emanates from the sleeping body. Silence. Only heat emanates. Huh. Are we gonna do him? Yes. Can we try the to The aging him? alcoholic is still there, breathing. The air in the room is stale. No, we have to go. was about Krasmazov. There's something you can get out of your head. Krasmazov, the father of scientific communism, the premier of the Communist Party of Shestengrad, during the anti-centennial revolution, head of the 11-day government, sideburn-toting, bearded figurehead of the movement, shot himself in the mouth and died. One day in his cabinet, as things were collapsing around him, just gave up. But that's not good propaganda, is it? Be a communist, shoot yourself in the mouth. Something about this irks you. Yes, we have to find out more about Krasmazov. Lonesome, long way home. <laughs> Keep the door open, so he's got some air. What was here? These shoes come in three different sizes. Shoes. Yeah, there are shoes. It's paintings. And there's the other room. A dark room. The shared bathroom. The shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. Aliens. A cryptid. Take that money. We need all the money we can get, Kim. Can you lend me some money? to sleep somewhere, you know. Let's get out on the balcony. Maybe we'll meet the, the young man. Maybe he is the communard. Breaker box is full of cigarette butts and electric wires. That must be his. Money. And up here. 
so many things here. Someone's growing rosemary, thyme, and a cactus. And that could also be uh, the young man. What's we have this? Pardon, 29 and this. Pardon, 30. Can we? No. Hey there. Anyone here? This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Hey, smoker man. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. Yes. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. He looks around taking in the cold spring We air. should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? What do you mean? The smoker on the balcony. This is why we are here, right? He might know something about the murder. So, tomorrow, 9 p.m.? Suddenly, he's a little worried about your memory. Don't worry. It's mostly all still here. You can remember things. You got this. Sounds good. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow, he's probably gone for today. Ah. But what if he's not? It's the door. Nothing for you to see here right now. But money. Where are we gonna... If we get out here, oh well, not really, right? Not really. We would have to jump down there. There is an exit, the back exit. Back again. Now is this open now? No. Kuno West. Kuno West. Try to sneak up on me again. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all right. We know, we know, we know. Huh? Again, the sun is shining so beautifully. here anyways. A single blue naval coat. I wanted to talk to you again. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? To take a sip from a silvery thermal cub. I spoke with the lorryman. On the contrary, officer. There are yet camioners you have not talked to. And don't look so surprised. In a time like this, it would be strange if wild patterns didn't have eyes on the harbour. They must have someone in an overlooked position, near the gates. I suggest you go back and canvas for more suspects. I guess we will. I guess we really will. Come on, Kim, it's time. These lorry drivers don't lobby themselves out. I don't really know what we're talking about here. But I'm sure we're gonna progress. We didn't find your husband, good, good, good woman, but... Wait, are there two people now? No. Thing to you, ain't it? The lorry drivers. 
somehow more want. Where could we go here? Nothing yet. Can we do it now? A rusting control panel with this panel usually. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, the tree in the wind. The tree. Whirling in rags. Hey, 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 how about you? Again. Looking for something odd? Come to tell me to fuck off again? You're lorry man, right? What's your stance on drugs? Drugs? They're shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. He takes a long drag on his cigarette. Why not? You know where that shit comes from? Sarah Miridza. Safre. Il Mara. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. They know they can't beat us in a fair fight, so they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage, racial economic sabotage. Oh. So I take it you're not smuggling drugs out of Martinez? Not in, not out. I'll never betray the purity of my tribe. So you're telling us that you don't know anything about drug smuggling through Terminal B? I don't know shit. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Uh -huh. And what are you still hanging around here for? Most other communeurs have left. What do you think? I can't leave the lorry unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's those little kips sneaking on at night. If they touch my stuff, the bosses will be on my ass like ass cancer. There was a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of a big lorry nearby. I did see one lorry with a trailer doors open on my way here. Do you know what happened? Yeah, I knew that guy. He was an honest driver who loved this country. Uh, we were having a good debate about genetics at the Wheeling in Rags when some kip boys smashed his lock and took damn near everything. Lost his fucking job over it. Since he left, I haven't had anyone to talk to. If they were getting drunk inside the whirling in rags, how could they know who broke into the lorry? Yeah, how could you know? What? Aren't we allowed to say that he's a kips who do all the stealing around here? That's not rotor science, man. Rotor science. Now, if not, if it's not you, then who's running the drugs through Terminal B, man? Isn't it obvious? Fucking ceiling, that beady-eyed sass Samaran. <laughs> His little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. Who is that? He's a Samaran guy who likes to pretend he's some kind of businessman. Or really, he's just selling his employer stuff. Stuff he stole after he broke the seals on his human ox lorry. Where do I find him? Just follow the smell. It smells like uh, apricot and oil when you're nearby. The Loreman lets out a raspy croak at his own sense of humor. Yes, yes. Where is he? Looks like uh, I offended your partner there. Too bad. Sealing's usually a little bit south of here, near the canal. You can't miss him. Just watch yourselves. His tribe are natural liars. It's in their blood. He's your man, all right. One hundred percent. He nods in a sagely manner than another puff of that seed. I wouldn't be so sure about it. Not until we've heard what Si Leng himself has to say. Because we need to pay him a visit, Guess then. who? He grins contented with himself. Uh, I guess that's... Is that hate or is that... What is it? Are you Si Leng? South near the canal. Now it's turning into a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not. You're not the one we we are looking for. Near the canal at the south of this. Freaking sea lang. Cannot get get into this here. What's going on? We 
have to do something. Come on, Kim. Near the canal, Silang. Forgot how you were called. You see a similar yes. street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! He gives you a thumbs up. What's so cool? Everything's cool! The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. And one more thing, officer, you're very cool. Bang, 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 bang! He makes both hands into finger pistols and fires a few finger bullets into the air. Ah, uh, you really? You think I'm cool? Oh, yes! You got style! You got personal style! You know what you like. He surveys his consumerist kingdom with an air of satisfaction. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. Settles back into the pile of boxes he's Don't sitting be on. distracted by the flattery and funny man act. Questions. Ah, uh, can you can you give me some money? No need to dress this one up. Just tell him what you want. I want your money now. Oh, okay. But why, officer? I don't know. It was just the only thing I could come up. with was in my head so to ask you i need to get money somehow. ah yes money is very important street vendor north that's serious are you trying to ask for a bribe if so you're not doing a very good job he looks at the window sorry detective oh well what's your stance on drugs, drugs? Selling? i don't go in for that officer drugs ruin lives Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Mwah. Tasty, tasty drugs. I am i don't like drugs anymore. That's very cool. I don't like drugs either. I only said I do because I didn't want to sound lame. Peer pressure. We're looking for a lorry driver who's transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. That's even cooler! You investigating narcotics crimes like that? But I am not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. A blatant lie, sire. Yet he tells it with such conviction. We'd believe him if we didn't know better. But you are a lorry man. Another driver's identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me, because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So you admit you're a lorry driver? No, I just said I work harder, and he's an asshole. I'm... Stops the thing. Realizing he can't get out of it. Smart man. Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. <laughs> So, my source tells me you're the one transporting drugs for the Union. No! That's insane! It's the fat hater! He's been eyeing me for a week and he sent you here! Maybe he is the one, huh? Have you thought about that? Yes, yeah, so squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? I mean, he's probably not a Unionist, the, the fat racist. He might be scum, but... Nothing! I told you! I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. He doesn't want to talk about them. He's afraid. It wasn't some drug crowd. You know who they are. Tell me now. Shush, please. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please, don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up. 
Here we go. There's a tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. Hmm. If you don't want to get into this mess, you have to give us a reason to move on. No. We're body sealing. Help us out. No one will know it was you. It's a she, okay? The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, she's no lady. Interesting. Could this driver be connected to the Hardy Boys? Is the lady driver the old woman back there pointing to the pale driver? Days thou strange. I don't know. Maybe. If she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved. I told you. It could be. She was strange. He's not ruling her out. Could she be associated with the Hollywoods? I don't know. I'm not local. I don't know anything about that. Who are these other drivers you All talk? of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? He points north. All of them. Even the ones who've left. I don't hang out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Okay, we're cool all now. All right. I scored. Let's cap this off with a purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detective. Both of you. You deserve it. Yeah, where are you from, Sylvain? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachol. Okay, Revachol, yeah. This man probably comes from Sea Guy, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainty, an archipelago in the Samara Isola. So you're from Apricot Suzerainty, right? Apricot Suzerainty calls to mind an era when the Sea Guy archipelago was colonized by Revachol. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. Sorry, I didn't mean to say, I meant to say that you're from uh, Sigui. Very cool. I admire your awareness of our intertwined histories. It's super nice of you to apologize for colonialism, but the apricot suzerainty is a shithole. That's why I left. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about this. It's some kind of mind reaction. No, no, it's very cool, officer. You're a cool cop for caring about those things. You should buy cool glasses, too. He points to a pile of sun. We already bought cool glasses from you. Can you give us some money? Start with a little compliment, then work your way up from there. This is about business, remember. Hey, you seem like a really successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh, okay. But why, officer? The man stops his face suddenly serious. After all this mess, the broken seals, lying to you, come on. Think of it as an investment. An investment? What kind of investment? Um... A guy told me I need money to live, otherwise it's game over and I don't want to die. A bold move. Let's see if it pays off. I? Uh, officer? He nods. He's genuinely perplexed. You said I was a cool cop, but it's not very cool to freeze to death on a cold park bench. Tugging at his heartstrings like that. Doesn't it feel a bit manipulative? No. It feels great. Okay, officer. I can't leave a man in need like that. How much do you need? One million real. Officer, do I look like I have that kind of money? Be reasonable. Okay, ten. All right. This should help you get back on your feet. He takes a tin note from a leather pouch. I'll look around, thanks. Ten, we got ten. Oh, that's that's the high point to celebrate. Now we're in a better position, Kim. Now we're in a better position. Souls that are around us, that are swirling. Ah, the good trader. And look, we, we even look dapper. It's the best way, Kim. That's the best days of our life. Until next time.